Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're gonna take on one of the most requested prop projects over the last year or so. We're gonna take an old vintage camera and turn it into a Star Wars inspired binoculars. Yeah, that's coming up. What's up you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is finally going to do it. We're going to build a Star Wars inspired set of binoculars. Now, why is it Star Wars inspired? Well, around here, we just don't do a lot of screen accuracy. Not that we have anything against that. We just like to uh, create and play in the Star Wars universe more than replicate. Now, all that said, this prop is going to be fairly close to the screen accurate used binoculars created for The Last Jedi. Now, regardless of what you think of the film or your opinion on it, one of the things I really enjoyed was the fact that they used found objects to create some of the props and the binoculars specifically. Have a look at these. Poe Dameron is using these binoculars towards the end of the film, and it's actually based off of a real camera. The base for this prop was actually a Bell and Howell director series with an electronic eye, specifically with tri lenses. Now you can find this specific type of camera in a lot of places on the internet, specifically eBay, where you can find them anywhere from $20 to $25 all the way up to $175, depending on the condition. You'll have to be careful though, there are a lot of cameras there that are only the single eye. So if you're looking for this to create an exact replica prop, you're gonna want the tri-lens design. Now, for all of you vintage camera collectors out there, before you jump on me for using a vintage camera for a prop, know this, I bought this particular camera in a lot of three. I paid 25 bucks for all of them and they were trashed. Most of them had superficial blemishes and things on the outside, but the insides for almost all three cameras that I purchased were gutted. There was nothing in them and they were no longer functional. So let's have a look at our camera and start diving into the build. The only scratch building I planned for this build was the viewfinder, and I decided to construct this out of Sintra. I bought several sheets for our Mandalorian armor, but that's another episode. For the binoculars, I need to match the shape of the back of the camera and then build a simple four wall construction that'll fit nicely against the frame. This stuff is pretty easy to work with and you can do a lot with minimal tools, which is always nice. You can purchase it in a variety of thicknesses and sizes. We'll put links to where I purchased ours in the show notes below. working through this and something interesting has happened. Removing all of the glue and the crud that was all on these two parts where I wanted to expose what was underneath the leather wrap, sometimes there's some happy accidents. The coloration that you see on this is something that we're often trying to get with paint. I went all the way down to the aluminum with sandpaper and the look is kind of what we would try to do if we were painting it and weathering it. It's a much better look and I'm gonna go ahead and try in other places to do as much on this as possible without painting it so that it's just the aluminum and the natural material used to make the camera. Anyway, I just kinda of wanted to point that out because we've kind of achieved that weathered look we want. Happy accidents.
the greeblification process of the prop is important, but I fully believe the key is to not over greeblify your prop. It's so easy to do too much. I am a freak for greeblies. But unless you're scratch building the surface of a Star Destroyer, less is almost always more. Adding subtle details can really make your project stand out. Put too many on them, and you'll sometimes lose the look. Trust me, I've overdone this more often than not. small rare earth magnets to attach the viewer to the camera. I needed to be able to remove the viewer so I could access the inside where we're gonna have the battery for our lights. Now, the magnets are super strong, but you can move the viewer around with enough force. At the end of the day, I'm still satisfied as it holds it in place really well. Okay, I tried to do all of this with bound parts, but I did cheat in one spot and I used the laser cutter to make the viewfinder insert. You could totally do this without, but I really, really, really wanted to use it. The electronics for this are 100% straightforward. I have three LEDs wired to a battery with a switch in the middle. Nothing fancy here, just interrupting the ground between the battery and the switch and the LEDs, which allows me to turn the LEDs on and off. All the LEDs have resistors built in and are good between nine and 12 volts. So I was able to power everything with a nine volt battery. I also wanted a strap and these simple wall hangers are perfect. I just had to drill through the soft aluminum shell. Now it looks like I'm drilling really fast in the video and my hand is in a precarious spot, but I assure you in real time, the drill bit is moving very, very slowly and I'm being careful. It almost took 10 minutes to drill through this. In hindsight, I should have used the drill press because I could have gone a little faster and a little safer. My partner in crime was able to find a leather strap that we could use in place of the nylon. 
We were going to use grommets. Okay, that didn't work. And found out that the grommet set we had that would fit was actually missing a little piece. So she still put the grommets in place and then added a little bit of hand sewing for just that extra authenticity. After over a year, I'm pretty thrilled to have a cool looking set of Star Wars inspired binoculars. I think using real world items like vintage cameras really lends authenticity to the project. I know that camera collectors often get upset when fans use classic equipment for props, and I get it, but I also see it as another way of recycling and repurposing something that might otherwise end up in a landfill. I think it's just another way that us prop builders build something out of nothing, or in this case, something out of something else. But you get the idea. Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're gonna take on one of the most requested, <laughs> we're going to make one of the most requested props, no, we're gonna make a Star Wars inspired binocular. Now, why do you say in, What's up, you awesome geeks? 